Okay? Now, mu s is a, is a coefficient of static friction. And it depends on what the surfaces are made of. Okay? So if it was glue, then mu s would be close to 1. If it's ice, then mu s would be close to 0. Okay? So almost done. Okay, so mu s is the coefficient okay, of static friction. Okay. Mu s is between, typically, it would have a value between 0 and 1. Okay. Um, Zero would be close to something like ice, okay? One would be something like um, glue, okay? Uh, the sandpaper is probably about a half, okay? Sandpaper bricks, maybe a half, okay? All right, one more thing. All right, so let's say we lift it even further, okay? If we lift it even further, then the brick's going to slide down the plane, and then we have another friction law, which is exactly the same, but you have a different coefficient. Okay? Um, I'm just going to put that up. So if we lift it even more, or increase the angle, yeah. Increase theta even more. Okay? And the brick slides down. And in this case, we have dynamic friction. This friction is called dynamic because it's moving. Okay? And in this case, we would have. Fk equals mu k multiplied by r, where mu k is the coefficient of dynamic friction. Okay, so I can put that up here. Mu k equals coefficient of dynamic. Ah, oh, my hand's getting sore. D y n a m i c friction. Um, one more minute. So one of the things that you need to notice is that mu k is less than mu s. That's important. Now I'm going to start this again. Here's an example. Okay? So this, when we do sound, you'll, re you'll, 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 one of the things that you'll notice is that students, you're a lot younger than me, so your range of frequencies that you can hear is much greater than mine. When you get older, you hear a much more limited range, which means when I do this example, the students find it much more painful than me, so I won't do it for long, okay? Um, so if you bring your finger, nails on the board, okay? <laughs> I, d I just didn't do anything for me, but I know some people don't like it, so I won't do it too often, okay? <laughs> your ears, it's, you hear much different, you hear all the frequencies. I only hear some of them. For me, it's just blue. So when I do that, and I won't, ah! what's basically happening is, the fingers going down the board are switching between mu k and mu s. When it's, it's basically what causes a jerking motion. Because when you pull your fingers, fingernails down the board, when, it, when they're actually moving, you have dynamic friction, and they stick. It makes a noise, becomes static friction, and then they move again, becomes, dyna becomes dynamic. So it's jumping between the two when I do that. Now, I could see it was painful for some people, so I don't want to do it again. Okay. All right, sorry, <laughs> I couldn't help myself. So another example that we'll talk about is something called anti-lock brakes, which you all heard of anti-lock brakes, right? You live in New England, or you don't live in New England, a lot of you, but you're in New England right now. Uh, and if you want to basically slow down on a slippy road, your brakes will, <coughs> if they lock, the car's going to skid. But if they move, then the car will, s the wheel will stick. And what happens is, when the, wheels are, when the wheels are rolling, you actually have that. You have mu s. 
when the wheels are slipping, you have mu k. So it goes between mu s and mu k to slow the car down.